Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining us on this afternoon. Um, we're here hosting an incredible institution with some uh, wonderful individuals uh, that's representing uh, Jackson State University in Jackson, uh, Mississippi. Um, we're excited for what uh, they will be sharing with us on today. And we look to continue to build a wonderful relationship with them moving forward. They're here for you all. They're here for uh, PCC students and efforts to, you know, help with that transfer process, give you another option. And we're, you know, we're hoping that some of you all may be interested in, in actually transferring to Jackson University. Um, but we're going to start our event on this evening. Uh, my name is Jeff Hall. I'm the coordinator for the Multicultural Center um, for Portland Community College at Rock Creek Campus. I'd like to yield the floor to Jackson State University, uh, yield the floor to the panelists uh, so they can introduce themselves and um, present their, uh, share their presentation with everyone on today. Hey, good afternoon, Portland Community College uh, students and our colleagues at Portland Community College. Uh, welcome to Jackson State University virtually. Of course, we are located in Jackson, Mississippi. I am Juno Jacobs, the Assistant uh, Director of Transfers, Reamit, and Complete to Compete. Uh, and we, I would like to introduce our other colleagues who are here from Jackson State University. At this time, if you would introduce yourself, unmute. Hello, my name is Daphne Brooks. I am the scholarship coordinator in the financial aid office. Good afternoon. My name is Kaylin Winters. I am, I'm a senior healthcare administration major from Cleveland, Mississippi. I humbly serve as the vice president of JSU Transfer Ambassadors, and I'm a student at Jackson State University. My name is Ozzy Radcliffe. I'm the director of financial aid here at Jackson State University. Uh, and I am here just in case we have any high level questions about okay. financial aid. So make sure you get those questions out. This is the time to, this is the time in the forum to ask. So don't be shy, ask those questions. Hey, and good afternoon, Portland Community College. My name is Nigel Dixon McCullum, and I serve as one of the transfer admissions counselors here at the Jackson State University. And we are so elated and glad to be on this afternoon. Great. So we're going to just get started and go straight into the presentation. Uh, Mr. Dixon McCullum, uh, as he mentioned, he's one of our transfer counselors. He will do the presentation today. And then we're going to show a few commercials. Uh, he can come um, and do that in his own way. Uh, Nigel, did you want to show the commercials first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah.
on campus can be an exciting and rewarding experience. Hello, my name is Layla Woodfork, a biology pre-med major from New Orleans, Louisiana, and I serve as Miss Freshman for this school year, and I'm a residential student. We are a diverse living learning community comprised of a mix of seven traditional residence halls, apartments, and suites. Today, I'd like to show you a room in Transitional Hall. As a residential student, you have the convenience of living close to classes, the library, laundry facilities, tutors, computer labs, and the Student Help Center. Living on campus also offers a helpful and supportive staff, a secure environment, academic support, leadership development, and employment opportunities. For more information, visit www.jsums.edu slash housing. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big meeting starts. Hello everyone, I am Kelsey Ford, a junior majoring in criminal justice from the city with soul, Jackson, Mississippi. And thank you for joining us for virtual high school day. I am in the Dolly M. E. Robinson Liberal Arts Building, and at the College of Liberal Arts, we like to consider ourselves to be the College of Culture across 10 departments. We are the home of the summa cum laude of bands, the sonic boom of the South, an award-winning theater program, a role of scholar finalists, Mississippi Humanities Council Teachers of the Year, and our Right Stuff, Tiger Tough, Army ROTC program that has been in existence for more than 50 years. In the state of Mississippi, we have the only HBCU music department with an opera, musical theater workshop, a fully functional orchestra, and string ensemble, as well as an accredited music technology program with a state-of-the-art recording studio and music technology lab. Students in the Department of Journalism and Media Studies gain experience in the university's TV station, JSU-TV, and NPR station, WJSU, on staff for JSU's award-winning school newspaper, The Blue and White Flash, and annual magazine, The Experience, and in internships with major news affiliates around the city. Just last year, students assisted with the CNN Town Hall. Our art program is located here in the beautiful Johnson Hall. We also have a state-of-the-art Mac lab, along with drawing and painting studios. This art gallery now houses the JSU Art Collection, which is a result of 68 years of collecting artwork to support cultural and civic activities among students and the public. Our students enter fellowships and conferences at Ivy League institutions and graduates go on to top graduate programs in their fields. For more information about the College of Liberal Arts, please visit www.jsums.edu slash liberal arts. Look at this, 94% of people believe company culture is important.
All right, so thank you so much, PCC students, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come here um, and learn some more information about the I Love Jackson State University. So we'll jump right ahead in our presentation. Um, so here at Jackson State University, first of all, we're located in the city of Jackson, Mississippi, um, which is the capital city of the state. Um, there is tons to do, um, and we're about two to three minutes from downtown. Um, so JSU was initially founded in the year of 1877. We have over 90 areas of um, study here that are composed in five colleges, and those academic colleges are going to be College of Business, College of Education and Human Development, College of Health Sciences, um, College of Liberal Arts, and also College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. Um, our average class size here at Jackson State University is going to be a 15 to 1 student to teacher ratio. So that creates a very intimate learning environment. Our average class size is going to be about 25 to 30 students. So um, if you all ever needed anything from the faculty or staff here, we are very helpful and we are very available to make sure that all of your needs are taken care of and met. Um, so some of our fully online degree programs include bachelors of science in child care and family education, um, criminal just, justice, healthcare administration, professional interdisciplinary studies, um, science and technology and um, emergency management technology concentration, and also university studies. So um, those of you all, I know you stay in Portland. So Portland is a um, quite a good ways from Jackson, Mississippi. So if you all still wanted to attend Jackson State University, these are going to be our 100% fully online degree programs that we offer. Um, so that means you can stay in Portland and you can also obtain a bachelor's here at Jackson State University. Um, so student life. So here at Jackson State University, we have over 60 plus student organizations, including um, student, government, so student Government Association, um, Men of Excellence. We have various groups that cater to our young ladies. Also, we have all nine of our divine, grind, divine nine Greek lettered organizations, including Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Phi Beta Sigma, um, Alpha Phi Alpha, and the list goes on. Um, we also have 
um, men and women's sports, including um, basketball, football. Um, we currently have our coach Prime, who is a retired NFL football player, and he is now serving as one of our uh, he's now serving as our head football coach. And we are off to a great season, great winning season. Um, so other student organizations include if a student would like to go study abroad, you can also do that while you're a student here at Jackson State University also. Um, so just speaking on some of our teams we have, I know um, Portland Community College, you all have women's soccer. So we do have that here. We have softball, tennis, track and field, and also volleyball. Um, so jumping right into our transfer admissions requirements, you can get into, there are three easy steps into getting into Jackson State University. First, submit a official application at jsums.edu um, forward slash apply. Secondly, we will need all of your transcripts. So if you've attended Portland Community College, um, um, and several other community colleges before you got to Portland, we will need all of those transcripts for evaluation. Um, and step three, if you have any questions, please feel free to email myself or anyone um, on the call or either email future tigers with an S at jsums.edu and we'll get right back with you to answer your questions. Um, so a transfer student can get admitted into the Jackson State University um, three ways. So the first way is to have 30 required hours. So we will um, require our transfer students to have met English composition, met and passed with a C or better English composition one and two, um, three hours of mathematics, so college algebra or higher math, six hours of a natural science, nine hours of fine arts and humanities, six hours and six hours of social and behavioral sciences with a C. So I'll just give you all a minute to evaluate this list before I move on to the next step. So I know some of you all on the call may be asking, so Mr. Dixon McCullum, what if I don't meet those requirements? So if you would like to transfer to JSU and you don't meet the 30 required hours, we will recommend you to send in your high school transcript for evaluation. Um, and with that being said, we do require our students who choose their route to have at least a 2.0 grade point average in their core classes, such as your sciences, your maths, your social studies, um, and your Englishes. And so you can also be admitted into Jackson State University if you have an associate's degree and, it's a, and um, you also have above a 2.0 grade point average. Okay, so now we have made it to the portion in our presentation um, about our transfer scholarships. And I will let Ms. Daphne Brooks, who is our scholarships coordinator, go over those. Hello everyone. Again, my name is Daphne Brooks, Scholarship Coordinator in Financial Aid. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk to you about the scholarships that we have for our transfer students. Now, in order to apply for scholarships, you must be fully admitted to the university. And once you get admitted to the university, you'll receive a J number which you will log into your pause account to create your net ID um, to be able to log into the scholarship portal. Now, once your J number is received, you'll come down to go to our webpage, www.jsumsi.edu. You'll go to undergraduate scholarships, and that'll take you to our scholarship webpage. Now, on our scholarship portal, it gives you for our first time freshmen, and also for our community college transfer students. Now, for community college transfer students, we have two scholarships. Uh, one is the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship, which you have to be, ha be a graduate of the community college with a 3.5 GPA with a minimum of 60 transferable credit hours, and you must have an AA degree and provide proof of your um, Phi Theta Kappa certificate. 
And that covers your full tuition, your room and board, any fees like your mailbox, student activity, capital improvement, also that out of state fee. And then you get $500 per semester for books. And then your scholarship, it can be renewed um, for one year because the scholarship only covers four consecutive semesters. Only as long as you maintain a 3.5 GPA with 30 credit hours by the end of each academic year. Now, our next scholarship is our Community Junior College Tuition Scholarship, which covers um, tuition only. And you have to have your AA degree with the 3.0 GPA, as well as 60 transferable credit hours. And this one is also renewable. Now, these scholarships are very competitive. So the application will open up on March 1st in our scholarship portal and it will close on June 1st. Anything after June 1st, uh, we would not consider. Now, in order to go to your scholarship portal, you'll just click there and it'll take you to the scholarship portal. And you'll just log in with your J number and your net ID and you will see all of the scholarships that we have to offer. Now, if you are deciding to come fall 22, we do have some scholarships that are open now through our development foundation. And these scholarships will be open until February the 15th. Now, there are a few of these scholarships that you may qualify for. Um, all you have to do is log into the portal, complete the general application, and it will auto match you to any of those scholarships that's in the portal now that are open. And there are over 300 scholarships available in our portal. So once you get all that done, um, you. Well, after the deadline of each scholarship, you should hear back from us within 30 days um, on the decision. These scholarships are not guaranteed. As I say, they are very competitive. So go ahead and get that information in as soon as the application opens. And that's all that I have on scholarships. Um, also, I do wanna tell you all about the FAFSA, FAFSA. Um, the FAFSA opened October the 1st. In order to be considered for any of the scholarships um, that must be completed. Um, so you'll go to studentaid.gov to complete your FAFSA. And if you have any questions, you can contact the financial aid office and we can assist you. And that's all that I have. Um, if you all have any questions, be sure to drop them in the chat box and um, we'll answer your questions. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Brooks. And I'm sorry, I was informed that my slides weren't changing. Okay, so I'll go back over the requirements. So um, as you can see, um, your English comp one and two, um, six hours of English comp one and two, um, three hours of college algebra or a higher math, um, six hours of your natural sciences. So that's your physical science, phys uh, physics, human AMP, one and two, um, general chemistry and general biology. Um, so your nine hours in your humanities and fine arts. So those are going to be your histories, your um, public speaking, your choir, your art. And finally, your six hours in your social and behavioral sciences. So that's your general sociology and psychology, your social work, your political science, criminology, and also economics. Okay, so if you um, move from Portland and you wish to stay on campus, here are a few of our residence halls that we have on campus. So majority of them are going to pretty much range you from about $2,500 to about $2,800. Um, so my personal preference um, the nicest one on campus is going to be your um, Campbell Hall. So that's going to be where you and three more roommates are going to share a um, kitchenette area with a full-size um, full size refrigerator and also a full-size living room. But you all are going to have your own um, on room um, and they are equipped, the doors are equipped with um, codes on the door so and no one else has your code you only have your own code and you and one more person are going to share a bathroom 
Um, so we know if you live on campus, you are required to have a meal plan. So here are going to be the cost of the meal plan. And I know you all are wondering, what, what's a Tiger Book? So we do have a few on-campus restaurants, including Chick-fil-A, Pizza Hut. Um, there is going to be a, a soul food station in our um, student center and also a Burger King. So this is where you can utilize your Tiger Books. Um, and you get those Tiger Books per semester. So you get 250 in the fall and also 250 in the spring if that's the um, meal plan that you choose. All right, so um, we did have Kurt Franklin on our campus a few years ago, I think about two years ago. So I'll just play a snippet of his performance while he was here. And so here is a picture of Kirk Franklin with some of our students. And again, this is pre-COVID. So now our students are um, mandated to wear a mask on our campus when they're out um, walking the campus. So as noted earlier, here is our 21st head football coach, Dion Coach Prime Sanders. And like I said, we are off to a very good winning season. We have lost one game and we are almost done with our season. So here at Jackson State University, we are also known for our world-renowned band, the Sonic Boom of the South. So if a student would like to join the Sonic Boom of the South, please just simply visit www.sonicboomofthesouth.com to learn more information on how to um, be a part of the band. So I know everyone on the call has heard of the world artist, Lil Wayne. So one thing about JSU, we do, his um, ex-manager, Mr. Cortez, Tez Bryant, he is a alumni of the Jackson State University, and he's now teaching a course here at JSU that you can also be a part of. So if we have any young ladies or young men who are on the call who also would like to be a part of our cheer team, um, please email our cheer coach, Ms. Danielle Mickens, um, and I'll leave her um, information up on the screen uh, if you all want to jot that down also. So her email is going to be danielle.n.mickens at jsums.edu. And so Jackson State University, we are all on all forms of social media. We're on Facebook at JSU Undergraduate Recruitment. We're on Twitter at JSU Recruitment. We're also on Instagram at JSU Recruitment. And here is my email address. If you all ever have any questions, it's going to be Nigel, N-I-G-E-L dot A dot D-I-X-O-N hyphen. M C C O L L U M at J S U M S dot E D U. So if you all apply, just please let please let me know you applied, and I will go ahead and review your application and get back with you with a answer. Um, so I'm going to open the floor for any questions about anything that you all may have seen. If you have any questions. Um, I know some some students are shy sometimes, so if you would like to put your question in the chat, we can um, answer it then. All right, thank you, Mr. Dixon McCollum. Um, I guess we could probably start off with, I saw um, there was one question that was stated, uh, that was asked earlier in the chat by uh, Deborah Robinson. Um, and for we had a few people who joined in a little bit later after it was actually addressed. And so I, we could start off with that question. And um, I believe the question was asking, you know, what what um, type of support is offered to students who choose to apply and attend JSU online? Um, can you talk about that? And also, I guess, extend some of the differences and similarities with, um, you know, the online learning 
uh, in, as, in in person learning as well. If Dr. Jacobs or Dr. Adams, if you all could chime in on that. Yes, dealing with JSU Online, we do have a fully staffed office of JSU Online. They're um, located off campus. We are on the main campus. Uh, so they are on the campus downtown. Uh, I think they have about maybe eight or nine uh, staff members in their office. So everything is done online. Uh, and they're there to support the students who are on the fully online program. And uh, I know Nigel went over the six uh, areas that we have that are fully online. So the University Advisement Center, you know, when our students come in, when they've been admitted, they have to go through orientation. Uh, orientation is a part of the process, and that's how they will uh, receive their courses. But of course, if they're on the fully online program, they will also work with them. So it depends on if you're online or if you're doing face-to-face. -face. I know yesterday the other day we talked about, uh, we have some students who might be interested in fully online. Then we have some who are interested in coming uh, to the campus, coming to Jackson State University. Also offer 24 hour tutorial services. They are not in person, but we do have online. If you need tutoring outside of what is offered on campus, you can participate in 24-7 um, online tutoring. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a student. Uh, Hi, um, I just had a question. What is the percentage of transfer applicants that JSU usually accepts per year? Give me one second, I can tell you the exact number that we admit from year to year. We track our um, yield rates every year. And I do know that for our readmits, those that apply, we're typically at about 90%. Um, just give me a second, I'm gonna give you the exact number. For our transfer students. Thirty-four percent um, for fall twenty nineteen. Um, it was thirty-four percent for fall twenty twenty. It was about thirty percent. So it kind of ranges anywhere between there. Um, the students who typically don't get admitted are the ones that have low GPAs or um, they're suspended from their school, or maybe they don't have the thirty hours that are required. But Jackson State University does offer them an alternate route that if you're not, if you don't have the 30 hours that are required for admission, we do allow them to send in their high school transcript. And a lot of students just don't follow up with that step. Okay, good to know. Thank you. So now we don't have any more questions at the moment. We do have our transfer ambassador online um, on the phone call, Ms. Kaylin Winter. So I'll allow her a chance to tell her transfer student perspective. Thank you, Mr. Dixon McCullough. Um, good afternoon, PCC. I am a, a senior healthcare administration major from Cleveland, Mississippi, as I stated. And I humbly serve as the vice president for JSU Transfer Ambassadors. If you're wondering what are some of the other campus involvement organizations that I am a part of. Um, my list ranges from student conduct leaders, campus activities board, JSU Healthcare Administration Association, JSU Pre Alumni Council, and as I stated, JSU Transfer Ambassadors. And so for my transfer experience, it has been one that I have thoroughly enjoyed. I have been, I have really enjoyed my time here at Jackson State University. Um, I attended and graduated from Northwest Mississippi Community College in San Antonio, Mississippi. If you're wondering, that is closer to the north or half of Mississippi. Um, and I traveled down south. So it was a different experience with my background with um, attending institutions that were predominantly white. And to come to HBCU was definitely something that incurred a transition for me. But JSU made it a home as soon as I stepped foot on campus. If you're looking for a camp or college or university that gives you that home experience, I understand Portland is a long way away from Mississippi. But as soon as you step here at Jackson State, 
we're going to welcome, welcome you with open arms. And that is exactly what I felt as soon as I stepped foot at Jackson State. From your professors who will know you by name, you are not a number, um, unlike some of your other colleges and universities who just have so many students that it's hard to keep up with or connect with your professors on a personal level. You don't experience that here at Jackson State. Um, my professors, they welcomed me and they gave me personal advice and personal tours around um, some of the classes that I'm taking or I have taken throughout my time here at Jackson State. And that was something that really won me over and helped me realize I wanna be here at Jackson State University where I can feel like a person and I can fully be myself and accomplish all the dreams and aspirations that I've ever um, set out for myself. Also here at Jackson State, um, if you are a transfer student and you're worried about being involved, um, don't worry about that because we have a plethora of options for our online students and face-to-face -face or um, residential students here on campus. I do encourage you to come to Jackson State as I am a residential student. I live in one of the nicest dorms um, as Mr. Dixon McCollum um, mentioned, which is Campbell South, which is the female residence hall here on Jackson State campus. Um, and so it really allowed me to really be become in tune with my peers on campus as well as get that full, um, well-rounded experience with the culture here at Jackson State University. And so as a transfer student, I know that it's unlike any other experience that a traditional student who came in their freshman year experiences. As a transfer student, I had my head on straight. I knew what I was here for and I wanted to accomplish. I knew what I wanted to accomplish and how fast I wanted to get it done. And so because I graduated from my community college a year and a half early, um, I was able to come in full focus and jump into it and succeed. And I have high academic standing here at the um, institution. And I'm so blessed and thankful for Jackson State. And so um, if you ever want to come to Jackson State and get a full-fledged tour and get a real experience of how it is here at Jackson State University, I highly encourage you come visit this wonderful institution for yourself and see what the home culture here that we and the welcome welcome environment that we have here at Jackson State. Um, as well, I want to hit before I close with the diversity that we have here at Jackson State. Um, we have our, I say our institution is unique just simply because of the um, high rates of diversity in or the diverse student population that we have here at Jackson State. So even though we are an HBCU um, institution, um, we do have students who are not from um, the United States and they are from all different parts of the world and country. And so that makes it even more um, interesting and exciting to be a part of because you get to, you never know who you're going to meet and you never know um, who you're going to encounter and end up making a connection that can carry you a lifetime. So I highly encourage you all to attend Jackson State University. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of our admissions counselors or our staff here at Jackson State. And I promise you, they will um, get back to you in a timely fashion and answer all your questions. As always, here from DI Love, I wish you the nothing but the best on your future endeavors. Hopefully, I will get to see you here at the Jackson State University as a transfer student. And if you have any questions, I encourage you to go on Instagram and follow JSU Transfer Ambassadors, and you will see all of our updates as well as the campus involvement that we have here at Jackson State University. Thank you. If I can, Kaylin, I got a quick uh, question for you, actually. Um, so first off, everyone, thanks for having us. I'm Josh. I'm one of the um, academic advising coordinators here at PCC, and I'm one of the point people for our healthcare pathway programs. And uh, so I do work with a lot of students who are going to transfer for uh, healthcare, some kind of something related. I don't know what it's like in Mississippi, but I'm at least on the West Coast, like the whole West Coast corridor, it's like it's about as competitive as you can get for almost all the healthcare fields, nursing, dental hygiene, pre-med, all that stuff. So I'm often finding myself encouraging students, look, if you can move out of state to someplace less competitive, maybe someplace that you, you know you can 
you can get a leg up uh, if you move out of state. So I'm curious, um, Kaylin, if you wouldn't mind, I'm curious what kind of healthcare program you're doing there and also any other healthcare programs that uh, Jackson State has. Most definitely. So I am honored to um, be a student at the only one school of public health in the state of Mississippi. Um, I am a healthcare administration major. And so at our school of public health, we offer communicative disorders majors on a both uh, undergrad and graduate level, as well as healthcare administration, um, where you can get your undergrad degree in healthcare administration, as well as your master's in healthcare administration at Jackson State University. And we also have doctoral programs um, within our curriculum as well. And so um, Jackson State School of Public Health is definitely one, to come, um, one of our competitive programs here at Jackson State. And it measures up with any other institution because we have students that have gone to other institutions and been able to um, succeed and work for um, the federal government in Washington, D.C., as well as have very high and prominent jobs. Um, over the summer, when as I speak on connections, I, one of my professors was able to connect me with one of the senior execs at Eli Lilly and Company, and I had the privilege of serving as a pharmaceutical sales rep um, intern over this past summer. And so connections like that, you don't get it. I say you don't get it any other institution. So when I talk about that personal connection, like your professors, they're gonna know you. Your professors, if you perform well, they're gonna make sure that you have the correct pathway in order to get to where you're trying to get to. And so um, hopefully that helped. Did that answer your question? Yeah, definitely. Thanks for that. Thanks very much for that. Any um, any other healthcare programs uh, you got, you guys have? That's naturally where my my own focus is in, so that's where I'm most curious. So um, we do have the program, the undergrad programs. We have um, biology pre med programs. A lot of our students come here for a physical therapy concentration, and we um, even though we do not have a physical therapy program, they do major in biology um, pre med and are able to, we have partnership with the University of Mississippi Medical Center, as well as some of our top um, hospitals and medical facilities here in the state of Mississippi partner with Jackson State University. So healthcare, we have formed a lot of different um, pathways and liaisons here at Jackson State University. Awesome, thanks so much for that. Thank you. Um, I know Ms. Winters talked about the dorm that she was staying in as a transfer student. Do most transfer students choose to stay in dorms or do you get other transfer students that prefer to live off campus? Um, and if so, what is the cost of living in the Mississippi area? We do have some um, transfer students that choose to stay on campus. Um, for our transfer students who choose not to stay on um, campus, there are options available in the Hines Rankin County area. Um, for living, if that is your personal preference. Um, I am not, I can get back with you on a, a estimated range of how much the cost of living is for um, an in-state or Mississippi cost of living. Um, but we have wonderful residential halls. Um, we had, they are up to date. Um, we have residence halls that always go into renovation and have like our newest renovated um, dormitory with Stewart Hall and McAllister. And they are wonderful. They have some great um, renovations that are happening um, within those residence halls and students are very pleased to stay here at Jackson State. So um, being a residential student, I highly encourage. I have not had a problem with living on campus. It's a very pleasant experience and it really gives you character. So <laughs> that's all I can say on that. Hopefully that answers Thank your you. question. And I'll chime in. The cost of living um, for a Mississippi resident is very affordable. Um, if you chose to live off campus, I'm sure you could probably find a very nice, affordable apartment, um, like she said, in the Hines and also the um, North Jackson, Mississippi area for around seven to probably, I would just say 900. 
at the you know at the max so <laughs> very affordable so do any other students on the call have any more questions um for our transfer ambassador as far as a student perspective i noticed there was a liberal arts program and i'm actually looking to be a filmmaker and i seen that there was a theater arts program and for someone that's a transfer student is a theater arts major like open for us and how would we be able to get into that okay yes so any major at jsu jackson state university is open for transfer students um i myself was a transfer student and i um was in the speech communication department so at the time it was the um theater and speech communication department so i had a very great time in that program and we also have a um, performance troupe that goes by the name of Mad Drama. So I'm sure you can look them up online. Um, so that's M-A-D-D-R-A-M-A -A -A Performance Troupe. And I'm sure you, like I said, I'm sure you can um, research them on YouTube and look at some of their performances. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Um, just one more about the transcripts. Uh, the college transfer or community college transfer transcript, uh, you have to have a GPA of 3.0, right? And when we submit our college transcripts, do we have to submit our high school ones as well? Now, we don't need your high school transcript. Um, the only way we need your high school transcript is if you don't meet the 30 required hours of a transfer student or already have an associate's degree. Um, so if you wish to transfer to Jackson State University before you receive an associate's degree, you will have to have the 30 required hours. Um, so like I said, those are going to be your six hours of your English composition one and two, your six hours of natural science, um, three hours of um, college algebra or a higher math, um, nine, out, nine hours of um, fine arts and humanities and six hours of social science. So now if you have those and you obtain a C or a higher because um, D's and F's do not transfer. Um, and also your remedial courses as in your um, beginning Englishes, beginning maths, um, those courses don't transfer um, to institution also. So now if you meet those 30 required hours, you do not have to submit a high school transcript. But now if you don't meet those 30 required hours, um, Yes, you have to submit your um, high school transcript. And I know that's a lot, but now all of this is on our website um, at JS, jsums.edu, and I'll put that in the chat for you all. Okay. Is it possible for someone to graduate uh, their, with their associates and then reapply for Jackson State University um, the following uh, year? Uh, yes. So are you asking, like, just say, for instance, you want to sit out a, a year or a semester after you finish your um, Associates? Yes. Yes, so that's possible. Um, so just say, for instance, you graduate Pearl, no, not Pearl, Portland Community College, <laughs> um, PCC, I'm sorry, Portland Community College, um, 2012. And if you want to wait 10 years to go back to college, you can still apply as a transfer student. All right. Okay, I'm not going to wait 10 years, but thank you. <laughs> uh, you're welcome. 
Sorry for all the questions. Um, <laughs> so I'm familiar with the common black application and I know Jackson State is listed on there as one of the 65 HBCUs that the application goes to. Do you guys prefer transfer students to apply through there or would you prefer um, applications to come directly through JSU's private application? Um, it's really dependent on your personal preference. We do accept applications from Common Black App, but the only thing about that, if you do, if you fill out your application through Common Black App, you still have to create a future Tiger portal to um, complete your application with us. Um, so in my personal preference, it's easier to just go ahead and apply straight through JSU, the Jackson State University website, because um, you finish it. So now on the other end, I don't, I've never done an application through Common Black App. So I'm sure you probably have to fill out thing. How does that work? Have you done it before? I haven't done it before. No, I just looked into it um, recently, but I'm assuming it might be similar to like adding the college transcript, answering essay questions, maybe other general questions. But I think you're right with it probably being best to go directly through the school, being that it won't have me do any extra steps. Right, right, that. right. Like I said, if you do it through Common Blackout app, I know you have to fill out everything that they're asking. Um, but now your application is still incomplete with us. Um, so then you have to go in and create your portal and complete and submit the application through us. So I'm sure it, yeah, I know it'll be much easier to just go to our website, um, apply. And, you know, in all one step, because our application process takes about not even five minutes, you know, to go. Really? Through. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's very Thank simple. you. Good to know. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, does any um, of my colleagues, do you all have any more remarks um, before we turn it back over to PCC? Just like to encourage all uh, the Portland Community College students to uh, just take another look at Jackson State University. We've given you the, our uh, website. Just take another look at us. Uh, check us out. You know, look at our majors. Look at what we have to offer and just apply. Uh, Knight has already mentioned that he will uh, waive the fee, the application fee, so you don't have to worry about that. But we want you to go and apply in the next day or two. Just give us a look. You need to apply to Jackson State University. We are here for you. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and apply to JSU as Dr. Jacobs mentioned. As soon as you apply, make sure you log into that scholarship portal and view all those great scholarships that we have that could possibly you can stay on campus. Um, we have scholarships that will pay for you to stay on campus. So yeah, be sure to go ahead and get that taken care of as well. Thank you all. Um, I would just love to see you all on a tour. I am one of these transfer ambassadors and we conduct campus tours. So if you're interested in touring our beautiful campus, um, I will be ha happy and glad to show you around um, the home, my college home. My, um, the I love and I hope that you attend Jackson State University, apply look out for the scholarships, look out and follow us on Instagram and all social media platforms so you can become a part of our JSU community just like we are. Have a great day. All right, and for me, um, I would just like to say thank you all for um, being very attentive. This has been a great session and thanks for just taking the time out of your busy day to come and learn more about our institution. And now we'll turn it back over to you, um, Mr. Hall. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon McCullough. I, I really appreciate you all for coming out on uh, on this afternoon to learn more about Jackson State University. I really appreciate everyone at Jackson State for coming here. Dr. Jacobs, from when I connected with you, I think way back in April, you know, we've been consistent with this. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, it's, it's our pleasure. It's our yes, pleasure. yes. And Mr. Dixon McCullough, thank you. For, for communicating and sharing some ideas of what we can do. I really appreciate Ms. Daphne Brooks 
um, with the information on, on scholarships and, and Ms. Winters for, 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 for joining us and sharing from a student perspective. Thank you all. Um, thank you all, and Ms., Mr. Ratcliffe as well. Thank you all for joining us uh, today. And we're looking to build off of this relationship. I also want to uh, take the time to thank my, my colleagues as well. Um, Rachel Blackhill, Rachel Dixon, uh, Edder, um, Dr. Misi isn't here on today, um, we, uh, but we, I really appreciate the team for just coming together so we could put this together. And um, thank you all for just all the students for being in attendance. Thank you, thank you all. And um, we really hope that you all apply to Jackson State. Um, in addition to that, I mean, for many of you that may be concerned about the out-of-state tuition, that's that's not that's not an issue as well. I mean, Jackson State out of state tuition is very is is similar to you know their in state costs as well. I I don't know if we have a little bit of time, but Mr. Dix, can you talk about the out of state tuition compared to state for students that may be a little bit hesitant because of you know the norms of traditional out of state tuition? Right. So. Um... When I was an undergrad here, I believe out-of-state tuition used to be um, triple or five times what the tuition was. Um, so um, the IHL recognized that it was a need to revisit the out-of-state tuition cost. Um, so JSU's own um, out-of-state tuition cost is now $500 per semester. Um, so that's $1,000 a year. So now if you all get active in um, um, some of the PTK, I, Daphne, if I'm not mistaken, don't doesn't PTK waive the out-of-state tuition fee by Theta Kappa? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So I really do encourage students um, to find out who your Phi Theta Kappa counselor is on your campus and see if you can get active in Phi Theta Kappa, um, the honor society and that will open up so many doors for scholarships for you um so yeah so our out-of-state tuition fee is a thousand dollars flat rate per year all right thank you thank you Miss, mr dixon because it's, so it's really affordable to be an out-of-state student attending jackson state so don't hesitate um i also want to Thank uh, before we we move forward. I want to thank uh, Josh Bouchard for being here, the academic coordinator uh, for PCC students. If you have any questions in regards to what type of track or what type or what classes to take to um, transfer to Jackson State, please connect with Josh. Um, you know he'll help yeah, you. Let me um, okay. Drop my email. Yeah, and you still feel free to students. You are you are supposed to have an assigned advisor, but uh, feel free to reach out to me. And I can at least help you connect with them or whatever we might need to do. Um, we do this transfer stuff all the time. We know how our, it all articulates, like with our quarter system versus semester system. We do this all the time. So there's my email. Anyone, feel free to, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. All right. Thank you so much, Josh. Um, with that being said, uh, once again, thank you all for joining us on this evening. If you have questions um, with any of the PCC reps, please feel free to email us. If you have questions for any of our reps from Jackson State University, they share their email addresses. I mean, please connect with them. They're here for a reason. They want to build a rapport with you all. Um, so please connect with them. I mean, you don't get this opportunity too often to just speak with these different ones who can help you be, become admitted and also earn scholarships at the institution. So please don't hesitate, communicate with them. Um, with that being said, I want to wish everyone a wonderful day. Um, enjoy your evening in Jackson State. Enjoy your evening and remain of your day. Send them positive vibes. And thank you so much for being here. With that being said, uh, take care, everyone.